everyone and welcome to today's episode welcome to episode two here at chp youtube or tv tv yeah. um i'd like to thank everyone on the first on the first video um yep i know our surroundings are a bit different now we're doing it in my house the garage from the garage in here yeah, yeah it's very professional so yeah but look um you know welcome to second uh, today's episode it basically to start off um today we want to talk about um, the secret of the hustle. This is something that we've always wanted to um, talk about to you guys, uh, not only to our clients, but also to anyone who was watching. But this is something that is very, very important. It's something that uh, me and Andrew have you know, really delved ourselves into. And look, I just wanted to um, get started because there's one thing I wanted to ask you, Andrew, especially with yeah. the secret of the hustle. There was these five concepts or the five ways that you sort of brought my attention to, especially with the secret of the hustle. So. I want to go through this because what are these five ways and how are they, um, how do I say this, how are they congru- congruent or how are they related to the hustle? Well, first we need to understand what the <clears throat> hustle is. We yeah. need to understand yeah. the, the terminology of the hustle. Yeah. And I think hustle is a new way of saying working hard, mm. but with an extra maybe 10, 15%, 20%, maybe yeah. even 100% more effort. Yeah, exactly. Uh, something that I, I, I was watching uh, a, a actual video of this basketball player training, mm. Isaiah Thomas, yeah. and his trainer said something very interesting. He said, yeah. so they, they were doing a workout, mm. right? Mm. And through that workout, they had to do like a sprint at the end. They've already been training for like an hour or two or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. At the end of the sprint, he's like, all right, this is where you have to give 100%. Mm. Anyway, they've done the sprint, him and the yeah, yeah. trainer. Anyway, yeah. this trainer, imagine the trainer, like ex-military, yeah. perfect body, but like in the sense of like, like not, not, not Arnie, but yeah. just great mind, body, spirit. He's yeah. just right there, present yeah, in yeah. every moment, very aware. Mm. Um, and I mean, you could see the, the, yeah. his thighs, the rips in them. It was yeah, just, yeah, 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 yeah. And he turns around and he says to, to the NBA player, he's like, that's 100%? Yeah. He's like, i tell you what 100%, given 100% is. Mm. Given 100% is this. Mm. You are right here. So he's on the line mm. about to take mm. off. Mm. He's like, you're right there. And there's something happening to your family member mm. right there. Mind you, this is when you're tired. So 100%, given 100% is when you're tired, when you're, mm. you're rich you've reached exhaustion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in terms of hustle, it's, he said, given 100%, I bet you, mm. if you were to run from here to help your family member, mm. that would be your 100%. Right. So it's literally, you get up to the 100% and you know that that point of tightness, it's what are you gonna do next? And what you're gonna do next is when yeah. you just break, break through. through it, man. Right, yeah, and you'll get it. there and he's like, yeah. right now you're just at 75%, you're at 60%. Yeah, yeah. This is nothing. Yeah, yeah. Right, and that's what hustle's all about. Yeah, it's, it's going beyond what you already are. Yeah, or going beyond what you think you're capable of yeah. and you didn't know yourself to be. That's and right. And to get 100%, you're like, dude, I wanna that, keep going. That, that's what the hustle's yeah. all about. The yeah. hustle is something that it's, it's, mm. Can you teach yourself? Yeah, I think you can. Yeah, I think it's can. it's something that you can develop, but it's something that you have to commit to. Mm. You know, the the work ethic to 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 do this, mm. or what we're doing, or mm. any area, especially mm-hmm. fitness, spirituality, yeah, school, uni, work, whatever, whatever, uh, it, whatever it is yeah. that you're doing, playing sports, mm. giving that extra ten percent. You know, the best athletes, the best. Players are the ones, you know, that you might not see them for the whole game and then they just, this brilliance. Yeah. Yeah. Because what happens is, is that they take control of the game. Yeah, of course. You know, like Messi or Ronaldo or something like that. Guys, yeah. Or Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Steph Curry. Mm. In that split second, they've just gone, where did that just come where from? Where energy, did that, that energy, energy come, come from? energy burst come from? And so, I think, yeah. yeah. And then and basically, you know, that hustle definition, you know, a lot of people don't understand it. And look... I was going to, you know, bring a quote into this and look, it is basically the third step into our video today. So I'm going to hold off on the quote about the persistence versus perseverance. Yeah. But what I want to focus on right now is the five ways, because I find these five ways, you know, to and basically for the first step is to basically accept the challenge, right? Okay. And this is what, you know, knowing that the hustle is you're going 100, 100%. But it's what you do afterwards that mm-hmm. makes you a different person. That, that's what. That's where the 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 unknown world. The unknown world is. You yeah. got one hundred percent, but guess what? There's someone that's doing so much more. Oh, like, how much more? There like, is, how is, there how is, is this guy? There. How is this guy getting more energy? <laughs> there is, man. There is. is more. So basically, to accept the challenge is something that you know I want to ask you about the five ways because the first one. And what was the first one that you mentioned to me? It was basically handle. Was it handling frustration? Yeah, was it's it, learn yeah. to handle frustration. Yeah. Something that I got from being a life coach and mm-hmm. things that I learned 
through my coaching yeah. uh, and had, education. And, and hand, handling frustration, how is this the key, well, first step for the five ways to handling, you know, the secret of the hustle? Why is this the first one, especially because frustration? Because when you, like we're saying, the first topic yeah. is accepting the challenge. Mm. When you accept the challenge mm. of the next step that you're taking, yeah. whatever it is, getting married, what, yeah. whatever the, the next step may be in your life, mm. maybe you're trying to find a new job, yeah. um, you've just committed to losing weight, yeah. whatever whatever the case may be, the first thing that ever happens mm. is frustration kicks in yeah, because the results aren't there. Mm. Someone starts a business and because we live in a society where it's quick pace, Oh, yeah. Everything is just at the tip of your uh, mm. tip of your uh, fingers. fingers, fingers, yeah, fingers, your fingers yeah. It's at the tip of your fingertips, right? And that's the, the problem that we have is because we get so uh, we're over. Look, at the end of the day, society is overstimulated. Mm. That's the truth, right? Mm -hmm. We we're not even gathering our own thoughts. Why mm. the frustration mm. of time? Yeah, the frustration of the the goal that you set. You yep. know, people yep. over expect things you know mm -hmm. they over commit to yep. things mm. so that handling that part of and you're right because i do agree with the whole um almost uh, what do you call it the still stipulation with yeah. the over simulation of you know just uh of everything of, of yeah. how society is i think dr phil said it very well when he said we don't have time because we don't make time for the things that mattered to us back yeah. in the day yeah. that made us slow down that made us realize that in the present moment that we are very grateful yeah. and the frustration part especially when it comes to the hustle it's that point where you're banging your head against the wall hoping it's a break down and this yeah. is the thing that a lot of people when they know they're constantly faced with a challenge and they constantly go for it go for it go for it and nothing's coming out of it and that frustration builds and builds and basically it builds more than what you were doing you know you this is the sort of person you had hope and faith and abundance prosperity within yourself and then that's getting carried yeah. away from frustration people quit from it people quit from it because of well there's no results happening and so with handling frustration the benefit of this from your perspective and for our, you know, viewers, mm. you know, how can they, you know, deal with going through the hustle and maintaining that sense of the the, the frustration? How, how, do they, how can they go? Well, it's one thing that I learned is we have, our brain has the ability of stacking emotions. Yeah. And Anthony Robbins talks about yeah, this a lot. Like compounding the Compa it's like, it's like yeah. compound interest in the right? Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's compounding the, our, our emotions. What yeah. happens is frustration mm. builds up, right? Mm. So it, it doesn't, a lot of people mix up anger then frustration it's, yeah. frustration first starts off because you always get upset about something yeah, yeah. and it or it comes from a, an emotional yeah, state yeah, of yeah. life mm. is your life will be judged by your emotional state mm. in that given time mm. the meaning you ascribe to life mm. is the meaning that you will then search for in life whatever yeah, it may yeah. be mm. so when we stack emotions it'll be I'm frustrated mm. then anger kicks in yeah then disappointment kicks in, mm -hmm. right? Once we get disappointed, then we get discouraged. We get disempowered about doing something. Yeah, it's sort of that imp imp you're impressed. Uh, this is what I've learned from uh, Dr. Joseph Murphy, saying that you get an idea and you impress it onto your unconscious mm -hmm. mind, which is get and thoroughly gets expressed. So if you're yeah. sort of person that you start having the the this, that thought of ignorance, yep. they said the next thing is gonna be is worry. Yep. And then from worry, yep. creates anxiety, and then it'll be expressed through the body. And you're right, because from stacking all that, yeah. it's got to find its way to come out of the body. We are we are the ship. We are a ship of our soul. Yeah. So whatever we have to express from within ourselves, it's going to be expressed. Yeah. And I find that frustration is, you know... it's Frustration is yeah. key. And I yeah. think the mm -hmm. one point that I would, I would give is mm -hmm. learning that the external world mm -hmm. cannot physically... Mm -hmm. No, I won't say physically. It, it, no one can get you angry. Mm. No one can get you upset. Oh, no yeah, one can make you sad. Obviously, agree, loved yeah. ones and so forth, there's a certain leeway. Mm -hmm. But if you really, really think about it and you take responsibility, yeah. no one can really get you upset. It's and like, I think it's that's like, what you need to learn. No, and I understand 100% because I think when you let the external world frustrate you or you're accepting something to... It, like what Wayne, like the Wayne Dyer said, he goes, we don't have anger. Anger is always you know, within ourselves. When you Somewhere see anger... There, anyway. well, that's it's what, only until you well, bring it into your exactly. world, that's when it becomes he, anger. He goes, you see anger, but it's not necessarily coming from you. It's coming from other uh, other external resources mm. that have form, formatted yeah. themselves and to be expressed and what he's saying was is that if you start accepting that right you start bringing those people in so I find that the frustration part is that you start you know bring that from other people and this is why I think this first step is very very important because it's what everyone goes through when they want to be something that well they, it's part of accepting wanted. the challenge once you accept mm. that frustration is yeah. going to be part of it mm. people don't want problems 
like when I was when I started off coaching, yeah, people would come to me and be like, "All right, just mm. do just just do it." Yeah, <laughs> do what? Yeah, exactly. Hamra, 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 and it all goes away. No, no, it doesn't. There's a process. It's a yeah, to do yeah. with process. Exactly. As Christopher Howard would say, mm. anything in life is always a to do with process. Exactly so if you right. take frustration, yeah. It what's works. the process within it you need yep. to do with it yep. is learn about it appreciate mm-hmm. it and go wait a minute what's mm-hmm. actually happening right now where yeah. are these emotions coming from yeah you know where's this place have i felt this ever before mm-hmm. you know what's actually preventing me what's yeah. holding me back by having frustration exactly. yeah and the things with the problem with what anthony robbins says and what he says it so well is that i guess the biggest problem that we have as human beings is that we shouldn't have problems but we need those problems this is why we have emotions such as fear and it's always grown up within us you know the whole fight, yep. fight simulation and yeah. this is why we need those emotions and even people of you know um you know buddha or monk sort of thing yeah. you know i'm a big believer in positive thinking you know 110 but sometimes you know they say it's not good, or always good to have positive thinking no. sometimes you need the negative thinking but also you need the negative emotions yeah you, no, need, you need to learn life. from you the negative learn. emotions and frustrations yeah. part exactly of it. right and this moves us to the second part now which one was this this was learn how um how to handle rejection handling rejection this is something that you know, you've set the challenge of the idea that you want to come, you want to go and actually bring to the world. Fine, you handle the frustration, good on you. Now it comes to the point that you want to present it to either, you know, a person of an investor that you feel that he'd be a right person to fit for your business. Yeah. And unfortunately, you know, there'll be a lot of times when people get, you know, will reject you. So with learning from rejection, how is this something that's very relevant with the hustle? And this is something that, you know, it, it, people it's will definitely... I think it's... Oh, yeah. it's it's the relationship with hustle, mm. the thing that it's partnered to, mm. the partner of the hustle is rejection. Yeah, you know, um, like you were saying, you're prevent, you're pre- pre- preventing, you're presenting this challenge, uh, this this business idea, or yeah. idea. Mm. Everything is an investment when you mm. think about it. Really, mm-hmm. if you if you if you dial it down and, and break mm. away the walls. Yep. You're always investing in something, whether it's yep, yourself so. or an external thing. So yeah, the external yeah. thing could be a, a, a an investor, yep. um, a personal trainer, a life coach, a, a, a boss, a, whatever it is. Whatever, whatever, and you're yeah, saying, yeah. all right, this is me. And then that rejection hits. Rejection hits. Also, is, I find that rejection. That. I think rejection also, like what you're saying, is that it does handle from the external, but also internally. Of, you, of course. And of how course. and how is that internally rejection? Is, well, internal rejection is that self that self doubt. Mm, it comes from exactly. self doubt that mm. once you, because anything we've learned has always come from from a younger point of view of, course. of us. Of course. Uh, a friend of mine forwarded a video to me about uh, the man child. Yeah. Um, and what the person says is, in just brief, right, uh, says that if you want to grow up, mm. you're leaving behind your potential. Mm. Right. But hang on, growing up and what's the growing sense? up like being being becoming an adult, or like growing up and going away from that inner child, mm. and that there that inner child, like if you look at a kid, it's a perfect example. Mm. They're not as scared of rejection as a, as an adult is. Yeah, yeah. We are so scared, and I tell you why. Because we think, because as we grow, mm. I mean, the first thought is age, death. Because yeah. mm. then you start going to more funerals. You go weddings, more funerals, more birthdays, more this, more that. There's mm. commitments to life, and you're like, "Where's my life going? Mm-hmm. How do you control that?" It's it's just one big pile of rejection. You go, "What the hell is going on? What am I able to do here?" Mm. You know, and that's when in here, uh, yeah. And that's I think, when I the frustration lot, again kicks in. Actually, it's really interesting because what I think certain people have felt is that they go through the level of frustration. They haven't learned to accept it. And what happens is when they come to the grips of being a normal person or, you know, coming grips with reality, that's when they start rejecting of that inner child. And they start yeah. working on to five jobs that I don't like. Yeah. Start going day by day and just paying bills. And they yeah. go through all this sort of stuff. And this is something that I see a lot of the times is that they, they go, won't take risks also. They won't, they won't, oh, they no. won't go. Oh, yeah. they, Absolutely. We can only, Carl Jung said it best, you can only see what's in, uh, you can't see anything that's outside of you. No, right? Can't. And he was a big believer of this, mm. right? And um, the, the, like what you're saying just then, as soon as you start seeing rejection, right? And you suppress rejection and stack the emotion of oh, rejection. Yeah, yeah. You start filtering that in the world. You start yeah, yeah. becoming that in the world. And why do th- people think they don't like you? Oh, why does anyone like me? Mm-hmm. Why am I like this? And we start becoming very, why me, why me, why me? Yeah. You know, yeah, and so, the thing is, one of those things, that even Bernard Shaw said, he goes, we don't end up dying, we end up killing ourselves internally. And I was like, hey, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, that's a good saying. And the yeah. thing is, because we have taken up all of these, we've accepted the external realm of what is happening. And the thing is, we, we can't put a stop to it because we've been learned 
to, you know, um, I don't say learn, but sometimes, you know, we've taught ourselves in the wrong way of just accepting things what people say, people do. We haven't even been taught how, how to, to handle emotions. Exactly. We're taught, all right, if you have a problem, go to a psychologist, right, and take a few pills. Not saying that all psychologists do this, but a doctor, take some pills. Unfortunately, and then, it happens. Uh, uh, happens uh, and then just, it yeah. goes away. That's the truth of it. it. Problems will never go away. Just think of it, life is one big problem that needs to be solved, that you want to solve. And that problem is your journey. Yeah, exactly. You know, so rejection is going to be part of it. Whether it's yeah. your rejection from someone that you love, you said, look, honey, man, you know, like I, I, I want to do this. And then whatever, it's like, oh, babe, you know, like I, I cooked you dinner, but you're too tired. And then that person, you know, oh, I feel rejected right now, you know, mm. whatever it is. Yeah. You know, that person's rejecting me. Mm. You know, you come up with this brilliant idea and it's all wrapped up and it's beautiful yeah, and yeah. you do this and the person says, what the hell is this? Mm. And then you go, yeah, what the hell is this? But you don't realize that's the miracle. The miracle is the rejection. Exactly. You, you, need, to, you need to fail in order to succeed. But you, no one you, in society if you, wants if you, to. If you, if, you, if you succeed, you win. If you fail, guess what? You're going to learn. So if you know that you It's a win-win win situation to me. Yeah, it's, it's a win-win situation. That I know this, isn't a, this isn't a lose-lose situation or win-lose. It's always a win-win situation. If you succeed, you win. If you, lo- if you lose or you fail, you're going to learn something. And this is why I find with, you know, the accepting the challenge and learning from your frustration and actually how to handle it, but also learning from the rejection is something that's very important, which also brings to the third one. Right. And basically the learn, this is one, this is very, very interesting, especially uh, when it comes to financial situations. And this is about learning financial pressures. Yeah. Now, with this one, because this is something that people go through every single day. Yeah, everyone, and, worldwide. Yeah, worldwide, worldwide. It's, it's one of those things that I would like to be rich. And this is the thing that I was going to mention before I ask you a question, is that what I found with the goals, you know, with the law of goals, is that if you basically write a goal there, so I want to be rich, that is not necessarily a goal. But if you want to write, I want to be a millionaire, I want to have my $5 million in three years, that's a goal. And this would basically release... That's an outcome. This, an outcome, yeah, but also it's a goal that you're rele- you're basically relieving yourself of all any obstacles, any challenges. You're making it easy for yourself because if you say you wouldn't be rich, I can give you five dollars the next day and say, dude, you're richer than yeah. the most <laughs> most people out there. So with learning from financial pressures, right? With this one now, with the secret of the hustle, and this is comes hand in hand. I find this one's a pinnacle because this is what we go after. There's no denying it. We go after it too. We, this is why we want to help you guys. We want to present it's, packages to you guys. Been yeah. around for. Well, I don't know, 15, 10, 15,000 years uh, currency. Well, not currency, but money itself. Money yeah. exchange, you know, exchange. supply goods, goods and services. And so why learning from handle, you know, handling financial situations? Why is this of not uh, important? This is, this, is, this is more of a real point of view because mm-hmm. it's um, rejection is an emotion. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. We've, we've, we've talked about that. Yep. Frustration is an emotion. Mm-hmm. Money is a tangible yeah. emotion. Emotion, yeah. Because right now I could have a five dollar note. I have a ten dollar note. The ten dollar note makes me happier than the five dollar note. Yep. Right. So what happened? But if I put it together, it's fifteen dollars. Yeah. It's oh, wow. I know. I know. Oh, yeah. yeah. I can feel it. Then someone gives you a hundred bucks. If I told you right now you can have a million dollars, what would you do? Mm. And everybody would be like, I'll buy a house. I'll buy a car. I'll buy a car. I'll, buy, I'll pay I'll off buy my it. debts. Yeah, that's it. Oh, so you, straight away people are willing to spend their money. Mm. Um. I've got, I've got something that is got like mine. Something that's that's like mine. Oh, here you go, whatever. Yeah. Right? Money is a real issue. And we need to be able to take it from the realm of taboo mm-hmm. and start speaking about it. That's it. Right? And that's what this is all about, right? Mm, CHP, yeah. Confidence, Hustle, and Passion, mm. is teaching people mm. that, that taboo things. Yeah need to be spoken about exactly and the thing is I find that you know now certain coaches are out there are speaking about it they are bringing up about money and stuff and it's getting to the point now that they're actually saying that if you are a millionaire unfortunately that you are still broke and this is something that you may actually spoke over the phone about I said to Andrew that the problem is with these days that people want to become a millionaire and I go that's fantastic but I'll tell them the truth that now they're saying that if you're a millionaire you hit your first million so much responsibilities, so much more challenges, so much more frustrations, so much more rejections. Oh, and there's yeah, more. And there's, there's more of everything because now you don't have a, you don't really have a bullseye on your head. You've got a lot of people looking at you because you're a millionaire. And what happens is, what and you're paying same, people's bills if you're a millionaire. A millionaire, you're putting food on people's tables yeah. if they're working for you. Bigger responsibility. A bigger responsibility. And the thing is, though, with being a millionaire, some people have said, right, from reading up a lot of resources, they said that a million dollars aren't is not necessarily making me happy, but it's actually on the verge of actually just being still poor yeah and this, well this is an interesting thing you know how they say it's like seventy thousand dollars a year seventy five thousand dollars a year they've, they've estimated that this will make you happy you right uh millionaires will say it's 20 million dollars a year yep <laughs> yeah i know yeah and yeah. listen to this right yeah. 
This is this is reality, guys. Everyone, mm. whether you're rich or poor, yes. a billionaire, a trillionaire, mm. an oil rig owner, it does not matter. Yeah. You will have financial pressure. Mm. And guess what, guys? Oh my God. Once you get to that stage, yeah. you'll have yeah. different types and, of financial and, and, and pressure. Really, and really look into those people that are billionaires, millionaires. I want to ask you something. Have you ever looked at their debts? Oh, and look at their loans. Because I tell you right now, the amount of money Elon Musk has taken out for SpaceX for Tesla. The amount of money he's taken out right, for those companies to thrive with- He might have out. a billion, but his debt might be 10 billion. 10 billion. And that's the thing that the banks see that, hang on, you are making this, but you're taking- The investors going, yeah, um, yeah. Everybody's, but, but you see, everything becomes mm. within that reality. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. It, it In that sense, and what I want to clarify is, mm. look guys, the, 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 the the hustle's real. Like, if you really want something in life, you have to go out and get it. Yeah. That, that's as simple as that. Yeah. But it's not just put your head down and do it. There's a lot of things to it. And that's why we're doing this because- We can teach you guys and you don't have to do the work for yourself. We are yeah. we are taking the hard work out of for you guys so you can learn us quickly. Because you are experiencing, you know, watching us right now, whether, whether you're on the train, whether you're at work or at home, right, on the phone or on the laptop or iPad, that you're watching us and we're doing the work for you so we can give you a you know 20, 20 minute half an hour video or even hour video you can watch go wow I've learned something today yeah. now I'm going to apply it into as long as you apply it and that's yeah, what the exactly. thing is is that when you're dealing with financial pressure yep. you, you you know what I used to do in my mm. in my um, coaching sessions the client would be like look I want to I don't know start my own business say mm. oh, alright all right, how much do you want to make and, I, and I'll put a figure down so mm. they'll put you know uh, $125,000 a year and blah 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 and then you break that down mm. by the end of it I think it was like the average person would have it went, once they pass $100,000 after tax after yeah, yeah. don't forget as soon as people start making more money there there's more tax not just tax their expenses go up start, exactly. exactly instead of buying a $200 watch they'll buy $400 watch yeah exactly instead of buying mm. 10 packets of chips for you know a month they'll buy 20 packets of chips for a week yeah something like that yeah right? and and this and the thing is with when you were saying before about the five and ten dollar thing and this is what i wanted to move on to with the next um you know the next step but what i want to say is there was something of you know what would all the great teachers learn from money and they they put a monk and they gave him a five and ten dollar bill right and this is actually funny that you brought okay because, that's a joke no, 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 and, and they go what do you think of this now People are waiting for him to say, oh, well, $10 is worth more money. You know what he said? He goes, these are the two greatest gifts. This is it. He goes, these are the two greatest gifts. He goes, I'm grateful for both of these. Whether I only have $5, $10, $15, these are great gifts to me. Yeah. And I am grateful for this. And that shows a level of um, you know, awareness and, and consciousness, especially yeah, for a monk, that's brilliant. You know, to look at that. And this is why you know, about learning financial situations, you've got to learn that, sure, you know, from you know where I was, you know, years ago when I was making one hundred ten dollars a week to what I'm making now, you know, it's not about you know life, universe, God, whatever you guys believe in, on presenting me with challenges, but it's also showing me on what I'm, you know, what I'm worth value wise within myself, but also what I didn't have, yeah. and to be grateful for this moment. And this is why when you look at these people who are multi millionaires, they've got properties, they've got investors, you know, they've got all these businesses. You know, the deeper question is, is that the financial situation and the frustration people do have each and every day comes or stems from them not being grateful. This is something that I've experienced. This is something yep. that I've seen and something that I've interviewed with a lot of people in, right? And I'd find that with looking at this, you've got to realize where you came from. Go yeah. back to you know where you are only making X amount of money to why where you are right now, and this is why with this one we're secret of the hustle, especially with this one. Well, this that's what where, I want to say quickly yeah, before you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Warren Buffett mm. has a thirty billion dollar net worth. Yeah. Say so it was at one point he had thirty thirty billion. Back in nineteen fifty, back in nineteen fifty, his his family invested his insurance company nine fifty, and he made one hundred seventy five thousand dollars in that year in nineteen fifty. Which now, is what the equivalent of what a million now? Well, billion. Apparently, the guy's worth over like twenty. Well, yeah. Now yeah. It's, it's about thirty billion dollar net. Oh, worth. yeah, yeah. He pays himself a fifty thousand dollar salary, and it wasn't until about two thousand ten mm. he increased it to one hundred ten thousand dollars because he had to. Mm. Um, obviously, for tax purposes, yeah, you got yeah. a thirty billion dollar net worth, and you're paying yourself one hundred thousand dollars salary. Yeah, yeah. But he he, he it was a video he said it. Um, so what happened was he's walking down the street with a with a lady that uh, owns the Washington Post, and she says like, "Oh Warren, do you, do you have a do you have a quarter?" Mm -hmm. And he's like, 
And so do you have 15 cents? And yeah. he pulls out a quarter. Mm. He's like, sorry, I've only got a quarter. Mm. And she's like, just give me the quarter. Mm. And he's like, mm. no, I'll go make some change. Mm-hmm. She's like, just give me the quarter, Warren. It's okay. It's nothing. Mm-hmm. It's like, do you know what this quarter can do mm. over 30 years on compounded interest? Mm. You know, it's about a million dollars over 30, 40 yeah, years or yeah, something like exactly, that over yeah, compounded exactly, interest, yeah, right? Yeah, or whatever yeah, it was, yeah. right? And he said, it, 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 you see, rich people, certain people, like, I don't want to say rich, but people with money, you, you need to understand the value of it. Yeah, he yeah. still lives in the same house yes. he bought in like oh 1950. Yeah. And he has the, he upgrades his car once it's broken the down. House, the he house. had a 20 year old GMC. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, the, the, bear in mind, the, the pictures are very standard. It's not like a massive mansion you think yeah. of a 34. This million is a $30 billion dollar man. man. How much is his salary? How much is he making? 100,000. 100, and he, and he's, and he's, um, he's uh, uh, vice president or whatever it is. Yeah. He rides coach all the time. He doesn't ride business class in, no, he, in, in no. flights. No. So it's a value of money value when money. you're coming down to handling frustration. And the thing is, and then and to leave on that step. You well, know, Zig Ziglar says, yeah. don't spend more than you make. Exactly. And the thing, you know, the difference between being rich and being rich. Oh, I like that. I like what, that. Being, what is the difference between being rich and being rich? And that's something I want to leave to you guys. And really question yourself. What is the difference between being Pause it. We're going to charge you. Wait. No, no. Just grab the charger. Grab the charger because it's right here. I will see if you step That's why I wanted to wait. I was like, fuck. Oh, please. I don't didn't even know. realize it because um, yeah, you do that side. Like you plug it in, yeah, and I'll, okay. I'll do this side. Oh, that scared the fuck out of me. <laughs> I was like, oh, holy shit. Is it on? Oh, thank God. Good. Good. All right. All right. Give five minutes. Hold on. Hold on. Yes, wait, so look, wait. Go around. Where's your hand? There it is. Come on, let's give it up. Alright, so next one is commitment, yeah? Contentment. Uh, handling, yeah, well, being content or complacency. Oh, complacency. But I right. had to change it to contentment because. Yeah, contentment. Wanted just... Yeah, cool. Alright, so give five minutes, mate. One. And basically, you know, from going from the you know, Warren Buffett story, we move into the fourth step. Now, basically, this is contentment. You yeah. know, this is about handling, handling and learning contentment. how to handle complacency. Now, this is some complacency. So, like I said, from the secret of hustle, guys, the five ways we've learned basically how to handle frustration, how to handle rejection, how to handle your financial situations, yeah. and basically moving on to contentment or complacency. Yeah. Pretty much. So this is something that's very important as well. All these points are very important. You know, each each to their own. Each of them. I think it grows with each It does grow. It does grow. Becomes more and more. So with being complacent, now this is something that a lot of people do go through, especially the build up to this. Now the secret of the hustle, contentment, because being complacent. Get rid of the damn thing. Yep. I agree. Hundred percent. Get rid of it. Hundred percent. Look, everybody's got a price. Uh huh. No. Um. But the problem with that price is. Yep. What happens next? Mm-hmm. And that's what happens with people is they they, they reach that goal mm. and they're like, you know what, I've worked so hard for it. Mm. I just want to enjoy it myself. You know, for, go out for a for night. A while, for you a know, while. go out for a night. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. whatever it is. Night turns into two, three, four year, two years bankruptcy happens. Mm. Because what happens is it doesn't matter who it is, mm-hmm. rich, poor, middle class, poor. 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 Yeah. Once we get that, what happens is we, we, we get that that thing that we wanted. Right, mm. it's this magic coffee cup, and we've wanted it for mm. so long, mm. and then we drink it finally, and we can't stop drinking it, mm. or we just leave it the way it is, mm. just like you know. And what? when with coffee, when it stops going hot, it goes cold. Goes cold, and it goes from cold and then it goes, goes off, stale, and it goes off, and then it goes off, and then if you drink it, you get sick. You might have a stroke. Yeah, pretty much. And that's what happens with contentment. It builds up. Yeah, a Compressing. lot of problems afterwards. Yeah, uh, people start going to the gym. They start getting results. <sighs> and then, you know what? I've worked so hard for this body. They get the compliments. Mm-hmm. The guy gets the girl. The guy, guy, whatever it is, right? That girl finally gets that <laughs> ideal man or ideal yep. woman, whatever the situation is. And then, and then the weight comes back on, or whatever it may be. Yeah. It happened to me. Um, yeah. And I can learn from experience. I I had gotten. I had gotten. That's not even a word. Um, it happened with you started making good money as a life coach mm-hmm. you know started helping you know we had a little bit of celebrity moments you know yeah, yeah, like, yeah. hey hey are you the guy from my yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and I'm like yeah why do I have to do it anymore mm. 
I got to the point and you know explain from that story especially with being complacent I find that momentum is a big big thing in this because by mom- by keeping momentum up right it's okay and, to and take a-, a day off or two so you can your body needs and, that re- your and, spirit needs to and Jim Rowan and Jim Rowan said it as well he goes how long re- re- your goes, energy your how, batteries exactly and Jim, Jim Rowan said it very very well he goes how long should the average person work Ooh, right and all he said was he goes six days he goes six days. Jesus he goes, did it. Yeah, he goes six days. He goes let's. And the thing is, knowing that Jim Rohn came from the deep, deep west, didn't he? Was, was, it, was Mississippi oh, or yeah, something like correct. that? Anyway, what he and you know, speaking he doesn't of God, say what he says. What? What? Yes, exactly. <laughs> what are you doing about it? Yeah, exactly. What are you doing so about being it? so being six days. And when he said that, he goes Sunday's rest. So it's keeping up God's momentum. You know, God's you know scheduling. <laughs> but he goes that he goes. Don't let the weeds overgrow. And this yeah. is the thing that he've always said, but always take the time to rest. And this is the problem Neither. with a lot of people is that they feel that when they rest, they quit. It's like we're stopping something. It's yeah. like no, you're never, you're not, you know, no, you're dude. not stopping, you're not quitting, you're just taking a rest. All right, they always say rest, but it's never okay quit. Too. You need to enjoy. You, you need to enjoy. The you need to of enjoy life. life. You need yeah. to enjoy the fruits of life, and yeah. this is honest. Uh, and it's we're not going to give you, you know, fluffy stuff here mm. and say. Yeah whatever but the, the truth is is like as much as people will say unless you're a millionaire you shouldn't be resting this, this is the problem that I don't like uh, is, this is the problem I don't like I, I go, dude you're gonna burn out regardless and this, mate. That, and this is something that we discussed on the last episode not everybody's the same no. not everybody's the same each person has their own their own energy level not many people can like for example I thought I no one could deal with my the way I I work 18 hours a day yeah. 19 hours a day Jasmine can stay up till my, my fiance can stay up till two three o'clock in the morning. Get up and go to work. It's you know it's mm. seven o'clock eight o'clock. Oh, different she, people. Yeah, I can't do that. I need no. six hours. I need yeah. five hours yeah. of sleep. She uh, three hours back. Off she goes. Yeah, exactly. You know, so everybody has a different uh, energy bar. Everybody and has a different it. source of bo- uh, batteries. Yep. You know, um, yep. and and you you need to understand that there's a difference between resting and yeah and stopping. Yeah, of course. there's a big, big difference, and you need to be able to. You rest you, when you rest. You are re-energizing yourself. You're charging you your batteries. To, yeah, meditation, you stop, uh, praying, yoga, whatever, yeah. whatever, it, whatever, it is, yoga, whatever it is. Mm. You know, going to the gym. You might. That's actually, you know, mm. expanding yourself. You, yeah. you need to be able to have a period of time when you. Yeah. We're not talking about it like every day. Once you've reached your goal, yeah. you need to have some time to say, "All right, fuck! I didn't know this was. I knew this was going to happen. I got what I wanted, but what's next?" Yeah, exactly. You know, right. now you got to maintain it. Yeah. You got to maintain that bank account. You got to maintain that body. You need to keep pushing forward to the next step. Yeah, right. But in between, it's perfect. Anyone that says I'm more than happy to go toe to toe with them bad opinions but mm. you need some sort of rest period when you're doing stuff yeah. but don't get confused with contentment keep pushing keep hustling that's the whole point of the hustle exactly. the whole point of the hustle is you keep going but you need time for your family your friends go watch the latest movie just to relax and let your mind be, be a zombie for one day but not every day exactly right be unconscious yeah and instead balance, of always and, being conscious and that's why we have you know the concept of the yin yang we have to balance ourselves between the you know, between the dark and the light key, between key, the black and white because by using that Right, and you balance your life. Right, it shows you that you are, you know, are a different level, especially with the way that you want to be uh, represented, or you want to be, you know, be seen in the world by balancing your family, by balancing your friends, by balancing your work life, by yeah. balancing other things, your hobbies, whatever it may be. This is something that a lot of people have got to get to, especially with learning how to be, you know, go over being contentment and all that sort mm-hmm. of stuff, you know. And it's funny how you know, Rick, like Rick Ross, that song, yeah, "Every Day I'm Hustling." Every day I'm hustling. Uh, every day I'm hustling. And that song, you know, he he constantly sings about you know from where he was and to the person that he wanted to become. Yeah. You always have days to rest. You always have days to sleep, but don't take it for granted because you know there are times that you'll burn yourself out to the point that you don't want to do it anymore. You get sick of doing. You get sick and tired. And put it this way, you can end up quitting what you love doing. Exactly. And Even if it's yeah. a nine to five job, you love this job. Yeah, exactly. You've been going flat stick about it, Mm. and then you're just Mm. like, and then you realize you just quit something that you really enjoyed, Mm. and that and it sucks, man. It really does, and And I see it every day. And people don't. What can I say? People just don't don't see it. And and the truth about it is, is it worth burning out over something that you love? But if you're not, if you're burning out over something that you don't love, then that's a serious problem. That that. It's not a serious problem, but it's a symptom that needs to be challenged. It needs yeah, to be exactly. unbroken, and you need to, to get through it. Yeah. Because each time you get to the next level, yeah, so yeah. you reach a goal, mm-hmm. 
it becomes its own comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Then you have to break out of that comfort zone. Mm. You know, make one million. Then you got to break out of the one million dollar comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Make ten million, not yeah. two million. You got to go exactly. to the ten million part. Mm, of course, because if you go to the two million part, yeah. but you got to go slowly. <laughs> So you get and this is it. why, and this is why, and you know, look, we're not millionaires, but this is why we're talking about this because we're preparing ourselves up for that. We know what's going to happen in the future. We know that when once we hit that, what's going to happen next? Beautiful. The question is, do you ask yourself every single time? Is can I do not only better than this, but can I go even higher? And the answer will always be yes. Yeah. Because you know there'll be new levels, there'll be new challenges, but the journey will always continue yeah. on. See, I'm famous. Pressing buttons. So yeah, so basically what I was saying before is that you've got to ask yourself that question of, you know, once I hit this level, what is next? You yeah. know, the question is, you know, should I be going higher? And the answer will always be yes. Because yeah. you know that there'll be new levels, new journeys, and, you know, new opportunities to present yourself to it. And basically from that, Right from the fourth step, we move to the final step, which is number five, and basically is learn to give more. Yeah. Right, this is basically for the secret of the hustle, and this is something that we've seen in Andy Fasala, Greg Cardone, Tony Robbins, Les Brown, Bob Proctor, Jordan uh, Belford, all these guys, mm. right, Warren Buffett, and all the other guys, is that they've always had that selfless way of giving to their not only their clients but to the people that admire them that they love them that they have come to their seminars and bought all their work off and I find that learning to give more from my perspective is the highest you can go to is basically you know to basically pour your heart out and to over promise and over deliver but from your perspective what do you think from this one it's coming from a, a place of hard space it, mm. and what I mean by that it's something that we learn as coaches yep. is learning to come from a place of a judgment free zone mm-hmm. It's also learning to create a space mm-hmm. that's safe for others, safe to yep. you, safe to the world. So yep. it, it, the ecological side. And what I mean yep. by that is people nowadays yep. think mm-hmm. that they don't want something in return. Yep. Listen, if, if, if I want to give you a $5 note, mm. you say, okay, can I uh, look, yeah, $5 for a coffee? I'll pay you back. And I say, mm-hmm. I don't worry about it. Yep. I really mean don't worry about it. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. But if there's some level you expect something back continuously, then you're misunderstanding how the world works, how business also works, mm-hmm. how becoming wealthy works, mm. but also how relationships work. Yeah. You know, I always say love someone and I'm learning to this day. I'm still learning every day how to do it. Yep. That's not something like once you've learned it and that's it. It's an ever, it's never, you're never ending. If you're, uh, if you're constantly learning, and this is something yeah. that a lot of people have got to take on upon, but especially when it comes to giving more to people, you're giving value, you're giving your heart to those certain people um, that work with you, that admire you, that want to be like you. You know, you're giving your free time, you're giving your expertise, you're giving your resources, tools, whatever you've learned. And the thing is, you're doing it at no charge, and because you are a very priceless person, mm. you know, you are a value to society, to the world. But guess what? You give it. You you are given to the people, um, you know, to people that you know you know are going to get a great sense of learning, a great sense of experience, but also that it's going to raise their level of awareness. Mm-hmm. It's going to raise their um, um, their yeah. consciousness to a next level yeah. that they would never think. And this is something that you know, from going from that step, I want to bring to this one here, uh, especially learning from pain and pleasure, because there's something that we learned before, right? And this is what I wanted to bring up about because with the secret of the hustle that what I've learned personally in my life and I'm sure that you've learned personally yeah. in your life is pretty much that, you know, like I said before, what Tony Robbins said is that the one thing people think they should never have is a problem, but you need it. And this is why, and this is something that I wrote in my book and I wanted to you know, personally quote this to you guys is basically, um, basically, you know, when it comes to God and all that sort of stuff, right? when I said that, you know, the value of darkness, the value mm-hmm. of darkness that I found that a lot of people go through, especially with this, they go to dark, very dark places when it mm-hmm. goes in the hustle, you yeah. know, and what I found is that it comes a lonely road too. Yeah, very, very lonely road. So what I find is that you know when you are in darkness, you know you are truly blessed to be a part of the pain you are going through because God is changing, right, you for the better. But this is the greatest thing about it is that pain is the weakness exiting your body to make room for the strength. Whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! Pain is the weakness, weakness exiting your body, exiting your body, body to make room. 
to make room room for your strengths for your strengths for your strengths okay I want people to understand that okay I, and, and this, and this is something I want you that's the book that it says right right there <laughs> right there so basically this is something that got quoted and this was by Pastor David pain. Crosby right what he said he goes pain will change you more profoundly than success or good fortune yeah. suffering shapes your perception of life your values and priorities and your goals and dreams your pain is changing you and you know this brings my attention to you know the bible's you know the quote by dave um by david uh david's quote in um i think it was uh just i think it was uh phil sign 23 I, I do apologize i'm not saying it right but what it said was though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for you are with me and you you uh, your road and your staff they comfort me as you prepare a table before me with the presence of my enemies now i know this is very deep for a lot of you but what I want you to understand is through these five ways with what me and Andrew have gone through, and there'll be other steps as well, right? But accepting the challenge, you've got to understand that you're prepping yourself for the pain that is going to be presented to you on a table, whether it's from people that have walked over you, from your enemies, yeah. obstacles, challenges, even from family, all right? You've yeah. got to accept this. You've got to face this, all right? And basically the point of no return is once you take your front, your best foot forward yeah. and you take it, you know that this is going to come, but this is why we're presenting to you this podcast to you guys, so you prep yourself more accordingly it's for preparation this. for life. You know, a lot of people exactly. have been taught. You go to school, you learn what geometry yeah. and a couple mm. of paragraphs and so forth. Yeah. There's certain things. Not saying I'm not. I'm not um, um, taking a stab at the education system. What I'm yeah. saying is, is that there's things in life that people have not learned, and people yeah. then become egotistic because they think they've learned something by themselves. Mm. Therefore, it's their own way and their own perception yeah. and you know what? They hold on to things. People yeah. hold on to things, yeah. right? And mm. and what yeah. did we say about the coffee before? It's going to go stale, dude. Yeah, it's going to go off. Mm. You're going to have a stroke. You keep <laughs> keeping shit inside you. Pardon the, the the language. You keep right, keeping true. things that's inside true. of you. That's true. It's going to explode on you. And and I always say this: people, if you imagine a pantry, right? And and what yeah. happens is we stack all our stuff into the pantry. Now, yeah. if you overload. That pantry, what happens next? When you mm. open it up, it's going to hit you straight in the face. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So you're absolutely right there, man. You're yeah. absolutely right. And this, is, and this is something that I want to you know, move into the next one. This is something that, you know, from the first step, accept the challenge, right? So you've got to accept the pain that you're going to be facing, but also accept the five ways. Yeah. And like I said, the five ways are? First, first key is to handle frustration. Yep. Right? Learning how to handle frustration, anger, and disappointment. That's it. The second step is learn... To handle rejection, it's important on the road to success. Yep. On the road to anything. If you think of this, life is light, mm-hmm. is is the road to fulfillment, not happiness. Fulfillment, mm-hmm. right? Learn to handle financial pressures. Number two, mm-hmm. uh, three. Mm-hmm. Learning how to f- deal with contentment mm-hmm. and learn how to give more. Give more, beautiful. And I like And that. basically, this brings up to a very, very important um, step as well. And knowing that accept the challenge is very important as well, this brings up to the next one, which is make a declaration to yourself. Now, with this, right, why is this so important, especially with anyone who's going on the you know their own journey and they're hustling each and every day for their ideal life. So basically, we so basically as we were saying before, guys, moving from um, accepting the challenge and the five ways to you know uh, for what Andrew was talking about before, we move into the second step, which basically is making a declaration to yourself. Now, this is something I wanted to start off with, especially when it came to you know the secret of the hustle and why this is so important, especially making a declaration to yourself, is because I'd found that it is basically developing your own rule book. Mm. And what I had said basically about the declaration itself was that you've got to make a declaration to yourself. It's, you know, you've got to declare at war that you will succeed. And basically, no matter what it takes, and this is what the uh, the beauty of the hustle is, is that basically through the Thomas Edison story, you know, when the reporter had said, how many times did you fail? And then Edison said, you know, um, basically, I didn't fail. I just found 10,000 ways not to make a light bulb. I only found one way to make it work. You've got to understand that he backed himself up when someone had pointed out his failure. And basically through that pointing out, he said, my own rule book is making me basically accept the challenge of the hustle and basically making me consistent, keep momentum mm. against frustration, rejection, all that sort of stuff. But also, me um, going, getting out of contentment, but also learning to give more, especially what he had given the world, especially light, through the magnificence of, the magnificence of his own uh, creation, which was the fluorescent uh, light bulb. So basically, he said that he did not accept failure. 
And through this, uh, through not accepting failure, he created his own rule book. And this is something that I find that, you know, in your declaration, you know, if giving up, failing, or quitting is not allowed to exist in your mind, then there is only one and only one option that is to succeed. And to bring it over to you, Andrew, you know, when it comes to success stories, and we've had a lot of them, especially if people have gone through, you know, to hell and back, you know, make a declaration and why it's important, especially from, you know, making your own rule book. I mean, do you see that, you know, people should be doing a declaration for themselves and saying, this is what I am, this is what I should stick to, and this is what guarantees me success? I think it's knowing who you are, what you're good at and what you're not good at. You know, a lot, look, in sports, you work on your on your weaknesses, but I think in life, you just work on your strength. You know, what you're weak at, you're weak at. That's not what you're good at. What you're great at is what you work on on a consistent basis, as, yeah. as um, mm. Anthony Robbins would say, yeah. you know, constant, never-ending improvement. And I think yeah. the declaration is the the commitment mm-hmm. to not quitting on you yeah. as a person mm-hmm. exactly as a right. human being as exactly. a soul as someone that's part of this earth yep. saying i ain't gonna quit on me yep i'm gonna keep pushing through i'm gonna hustle through i'm just yep. gonna keep working through when i need help i will ask for help yep. but it's also saying set in stone saying this is what i want to do for the rest of my life yep this is who i want to be yep. for the rest of my life Along that line, you're going to find that person. Of course. Day by day, you start getting better and you start getting happy and you feel that Mm. fulfillment. You're like, this is more me. This is more me. Exactly. You're going to have setbacks, like we said before, with the five steps, but it's understanding also. Yeah. Yeah. And especially, you know, when when it comes to famous failures, and this is something I wanted to bring up as well, is that, you know, when you look to those who have have succeeded before us, you know, and before uh, me and Andrew, especially, you know, we should not be disassociated by them. And this is the biggest issue that people find is that, you know, during the hustle, we want to become someone or something that we truly desire. But I find that we say, well, they're there, but I'm here. But do you understand that they're the same person as you? We have the same DNA. We say we have the same you know, um, atoms, we have the same heart, liver, and eye sort of stuff. Mm. We are technically human beings overall, but the mindset's different. And what I found is... Well, that's where I think success lies in anyway. Exactly, man, exactly. And this is why that, um, you know, they, they fall, if you understand, is that, you know, during their hustle, they fall the same way that we fall. You know, sometimes we, sometimes the underdog like we are, we probably fall harder than other people out there. But well, even yeah. in saying that, like the story, I know this is, you know, this is for some people, maybe yeah. not appreciate it, but... Mm. Um, there was a moment where this is back in the 80s Donald Trump lost all his money so he went into debt at $187 million and mm. he walked past the bum and he was with like a reporter or someone yeah. and he's like see that bum over there mm. he's worth more than me and she, the lady turns around and goes and says what do you mean he's worth more than mm-hmm. you he's like alright take it this way he's $187, $187 million uh, more than me he's mm. worth more than me. she's like no he's not He's like, okay, put it this way. Mm. I'm minus $187 million. Mm. He's zero. So he is worth more than me at right. Wow. And what he said then, he's like, I took my eye off the ball. I stopped yep. doing business yep. the yep. way I was doing business. Yep. So he got his eye back on the ball. Yep. And there's no problem that a lot of people will say, don't worry about the past, yeah. look to new meanings yeah. and so forth. But sometimes yeah. it's like, wait a minute, what was actually working for me versus yeah. what was not working yeah, for yeah. me? Yeah, exactly. I'm going to do what was working for me. Exactly. And this is why we, we you know recommend that this rule book that you create, it's basically passages or it's any sort of affirmations that you abide by and that will carry you through these difficult times. And it's something that will bring to, um, you know, I didn't actually know about that trial. Yeah. Story. So, yeah. Okay, so it's mid eighties that he actually lost all his money. Yeah, $187 million in debt and he had a deadline by like three o'clock in the morning mm. and which was his which was three o'clock in the morning his time mm. but all the banks had closed overseas right so he was pretty much screwed he's like what do i do now yeah it's in his books yeah, and, his and, book his, and, stuff, yeah. and stuff like that but yeah. yeah he was yeah yeah so basically moving from that we move to the next step this is something that is very very important persistence versus perseverance and it's something i wanted to bring up because you know what are the difference people think that oh they exactly they you know go through the exact same uh, meaning or definition but what I want to explain is that, you know, the words persistence and perseverance have very similar meanings when it comes to success. Persistence is the choice to continue something in spite of difficulty in opposition mm-hmm. and struggle to achieve a goal. The single mindedness, uh, mindedness of a person brings out the dedication that he or she wants and needs to order to achieve their goal. That is for persistence. However, perseverance, and that story, I'm so glad you brought that, that story about 
hundred percent. But dude, guess what? When your family is mm. in trouble and you've put in hundred percent, you're tired. Yeah. People don't realize what a hundred percent really means. It's when you go yeah. over the the. Mm. And, and people don't take certain things or, or deep, meaningful things in life. And, and to be honest, I think it's perspective. It's not deep. I think it's just part of life. If you mm-hmm. see someone in trouble, yeah. I think it, and you don't do anything about it. Yeah. Also, mm. I think it's a question against your character also right. as a human being. Yeah. So when you're building yourself, building that character, if if you know, I think the imagination of knowing, like every sports player says, mm. I play each game like it's my last, last game. game. Exactly right, man. Right? I, like I, I don't like the meaning of I'm going to play my game like I'm going to die tomorrow. I mm-hmm. like it like tomorrow may be my retirement. I'm not going to be able to play. I might break my leg or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they go in every day as treat hard it, as they can. They treat it like it's do or die. They go trade it like someone's in trouble. Exactly. Michael Jordan's biggest motive, one of Michael Jordan's biggest motivation was every time I play, what if there's a son and his father mm. and that's the last, like that's the only time he's going to see him play. So he's always look in the crowd and he'll be like, Maybe this is the first time he's ever watching me, and he might be the you know last time. Last time, watched. you know, like he can't afford wow. to come to the game, and that was one of his biggest motivations was the fact that mm. I mean there was a psychopathic not so, like in the mean the word psychopathic, but he was to borderline where he'll be like I don't like your shoelaces. Is that what J- and Jordan? Was? And, and then he'll drop forty points and fifty points and like far out. You just turn around and someone will say hi to him and be like, I didn't like the way you said hi to me. And he could have been as friendly as possible. Mm-hmm. You watch his docos and stuff, and I might have got that part a bit. But yeah, he yeah. would just pick on anything. Yeah, yeah. He'd just be like, right. I don't like this. I used to do that. I used to be yeah. like, I don't like this guy's hair. Mm. So I'd just you know, yeah, yeah. go as hard as I can. Mm, there was yeah. points where with coaching, I took my sports. And isn't it funny? He, f- thing. he found, he, and that's what I'm saying. I, I love that analogy of he's finding things for his greater purpose of why he's a great basketball player. Of course, player. of course. Like that course, son and father, he goes, I'm going to make them see that I'm the greatest in the world. Of course. And that's, you know, that's one thing. It, it also was Kobe Bryant. And that's why give. The, yeah, that's, and the last step, the five things you yeah. said. You've got, you got to give. Give without... So you see, that there will be like... What's the son and father going to give Jordan, Michael Jordan? What no, are, nothing. Nothing. Well, what's Michael Jordan well, going to give that to those people? The connection, and the, bond. the connection, the, the ability to see someone do something. And, and Kobe Bryant says, he's like... The, the reason I play so hard is because these young people that are growing up, mm. you know, um, mind you, he's got a motivational company now. Who? Kobe Bryant. Oh, okay. Right? Um, mm. And it, But he's done it through storytelling for kids and yeah, stuff like that. Like, it's yeah, really yeah, cool. Yeah. But but that's where I'm leading into. He'll, <laughs> he'll be like, man, this generation, man, there's, there's someone there. He's like, it's expensive to come watch games. Mm. This might be one time, one time only they're going to see me. You know, if, if I can inspire someone to be the next me, yeah, like that's the, I mean that's fulfillment as a sports person as you get older and you get better yeah. at what you do in your mm-hmm. craft. Yeah. Um, you know, I think in our industry there's no limit to, you know mm. what I mean, like age. You know, yeah, sports yeah, yeah. it you know 30, 35, yes, yes, 40, yes, and yes. that's it. Mm. You know, Slatan, uh, Rooney. You know, had his time. Ronaldo. You know, God forbid. You know, Messi. These guys, the the, the the guys that we grew up with, the guys that we I'm grew not up a big with, fan. You know, I'm not a big soccer fan, but watching these guys, I'm more not the teams. I'm more of the player. Yeah, yeah. right. I'm not. I'm not supportive teams. I'm supportive of players. And to see those guys, it, you question going. It was, like it was that, hard that, for me to watch Kobe Bryant retire and he dropped sixty points in his last game. I mean, he shot fifty times. Yeah. But the fact that he put up sixty points at yeah. thirty-seven years old, he's the oldest player to ever do it, yeah. and no one will be able to do that no. again. Yeah. Right. So it's like this is my last game ever. Yeah. And, 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 points and this is why persistence is very, very important, especially, like I said before, you know, basically it's a single-mindedness of a person who brings out the dedication that he or she wants and needs in order to achieve their dream. Now, perseverance, on the other hand, is the continuation of commitment through the action in spite of lack of success. It is also the ability to overcome the repetitiveness of the problems from difficult situations. So to put it plainly, Perseverance. So, say that again. Um, so, um, because per- something just came into my head. So, persever- I- so, perseverance is the continuation of commitment through action in spite of lack of success. It is also the ability to overcome repetitiveness of, pro- of problems from difficult situations. So, you said before, mm-hmm. right? You said before, you do 100%, mm-hmm. right? That's the persistence you've done, right? I, I wish we had a board so we can draw it for you guys. You're 100%, you've hit it there, bang, right? You've done everything to achieve that goal. 
And the lack of success, you know you've done 110, 100%, but you know you have to keep going, okay. right? And it goes to another level. This is why persistence and perseverance not only show a different sort of meaning, but they show different sorts of levels of your commitment of the hustle. And this is why, especially, yeah, and basically this is why the, the, the survival thing you said, because this is what I actually wrote in the book. I said, perse- perseverance is more important than just plain persistence because it's about having stamina. Um, and endurance during this time of struggle. While, perse- by per- while persistence is a choice, perseverance is always about mean survival, about surviving. Yeah. It's about surviving through the toughest conditions and coming out the be- coming out better on the other side. When it comes to work, perseverance is the hard work you do. <laughs> you like this, perseverance is the hard work you do after you get tired of doing the hard work you already did. No, 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 I want you to understand this, so I want you you to understand, guys, is that the persistence level you do to 100% (laughs) is the hard work you're doing. Perseverance is the hard work you do after you get tired of doing the hard work you already did. Hard work you already did. So you know the level of hustle is is showing you, like, dude, you're working hard to 110%, but it's telling you now let's go to the extra mile, you're going to keep working harder. So think about it. If like you've hit one hundred percent, what what more energy can you put in? Do do a two hundred percent. This is the point that if you're if you're writing a book and you're typing away, there'll be times when you're going to have done eight hours. There'll be times people will do even more hours than you. That's the difference between persistence and perseverance. That's the difference between success and mediocr- mediocrity. Mediocrity, yeah. because yeah. The, the people that take it to the next step, yeah. are willing to see what happens in the next step. And I think what happens is. Sorry, I don't want to say what th- I think happens. What happens is people give up when the tough shit goes. Just yeah, just when they're about to reach what they need to reach. But, but at the point, the bubble is about to burst, and all it needs that little. They just need prick. just that little, that little, that little just yeah. that ex, just take that extra step, and it's always the hardest step because they don't know it's there. It's and that tired, step because when you step, you'll see the path, right? So you, you're walking on that path, you're yep. walking on that road. Yep. It's when you see the stop sign and you're just like, mm. all right, I've looked each way. Yep. Then because they can't see the next part of the pavement, yeah. they won't take the step into the concrete because the concrete's just been yeah. made or it's yeah. not there. Yeah. They're like, all right, well, I'm not going to go to the next step. Mm. And that's where faith comes in too. And look, and to, to finish off with this topic, especially, you know, if you respect the journey, then you have respect for the work that goes into it. Yeah, of course. Now, thought, their thoughts on this, because you, you're a big sports, sports fanatic, mm. and Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, and, you know, LeBron and all those guys, mm. right? You know that these guys had worked skin and bone, <laughs> hours on end, l- no sleep. I think Kobe Bryant played for three years with a broken finger. Played for a whole season with a broken mm. finger. Yeah, and that's a thing. Basketball. Yeah. It, you have to shoot it was his shooting hand it was his it was, yeah. it was this hand he only he had to play with it even in the finals against Boston Celtics in 2010 he had a broken finger yeah and he didn't he didn't let it heal then go to rehab nothing he no I think it's still crooked yeah and, and that's and that so for so someone like that guys and evidence like that or you know to support that it just shows you that a person who you know comes to you know to work or comes to their team and does the certain hours and go home to the other person who actually goes out it's like um the story that I heard from, you know, this is from Lawan, this is going back in the 90s, when David Coulthard used to be the test driver for, uh, for Williams at the time, right? Um, now, at the time, uh, I do believe when Nigel Mansell and it was, um, Eaton Centre and all that sort of stuff, when Nigel Mansell used to come in and actually train, mm. he would go and train for the certain hours set and then he'd go off and to the golf course and play. Senna, on the other hand, would actually come early hours in the morning to study the track, yeah. study the car, how the car's moving, and stay on it to make sure that every little detail was just so fine-tuned, even if you had to stay overnight to make sure. But some people go, oh, you're wasting your time. But you understand no, but that's that, the level you have to get at. That's uh, there's pers- a story about Kobe yeah. Bryant, uh, one of his trainers. Uh, so there was a scout for the Los Angeles Lakers, <laughs> and he calls him up the night before. He's like, you... Can we do a training a workout tomorrow morning at six thirty? He's like, all right, yeah, or five thirty or six six thirty. He's like, yeah, all right. So the guy gets there at six thirty, the the trainer or the scout, yeah, right? Yeah. Gets there at six thirty in the morning. Mm. Kobe Bryant, when he got there, all he heard was the you know when the basketball bounces, yeah, and he comes over. And Kobe Bryant had already done a full day's workout mm. within like an hour or something like that. Yeah, 
put up like a even, thousand even, shots even, or whatever it was, even, and he was yeah. sweating. Yeah, and then he went into another two hours of work or four hours yeah, of, yeah. of practice. Yeah, that's and that's, that's the pers- level you got to put persistence in. versus perseverance, guys. Yeah. The Rock does two gym sessions. And <laughs> he goes, I do two gym sessions before everyone wakes up in the world. Four thirty to five thirty, he does two gym sessions. Fuck. And that's a thing that is in between persistence versus perseverance. But and it's it's whether or not you want to live a life of excellence. That, that's what I mean. Like, yeah. live a life of excellence or mm. or not. It, it, yeah. it is. It, I think, you know how we said about making a declaration? I think that's, mm. well, it's up there. Yeah. Making a declaration. I think that's where it comes down to if you want it or not. And mm. I think doing this, mm. I prefer people to say, you know what? I'd rather not mm. do it than be. Yeah pretend to be doing it like saying yes and not doing it yeah and pretending that they are yeah because then you lose yourself whereas if you say you know what this isn't for me you know i might just work a nine to five do a bit of things on the side there but that's about it but i'm that's it not gonna push myself even more yeah you know whereas if other people i think it's a curse it really is successful people that like kobe bryant michael jordan lebron james all these people the work that they put in, I think it, I'm not gonna. I'm not saying it, it's a curse in a bad way. Yeah, yeah. It's a curse in a good way because it's it becomes lonely. It, it does becomes come lonely. dark and and it becomes. Mm. It does. You lose your train of thought. You lose what's going on around you. Uh, I think LeBron James not too long ago said sorry to his wife and said sorry to yeah, his kids. Yeah, I remember this. Was, was about the amount of time, like, the amount spent. Of time I've spent doing all this, mm-hmm. and he said thank you to his wife. And I think that's a a, a, a thing that most men should be doing more often, but. Um, I think that's but if you have someone it makes it easy when you have like a business partner or you have a life partner yeah, 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 of course. you know and you're like look this is the life that I want are you yeah. okay with it there's mm. going to be moments where I can't hold you there's going to be moments where I can't kiss you when I want to kiss you there's going to be mo- but I'm on my path that's this it. is my path are you okay with it yes or no no well that's it that's when you got to learn to cut the ties maybe as much as it hurts yeah. or mm. you say you know what it's not worth it. Yeah. Or you say, hey, babe, hey, mates, this is the path that I'm on. Either respect I it. Either I respect, respect it or not. That's it. That's the That's choice. It. Take it or leave it. That's it. And this is something that with all these steps, you know, accept the challenge, you know, make the declaration stuff and persistence versus perseverance has brings us to the final step, which is very, very important for ourselves. And this brings us to strive for a higher standard. Yeah. The best version. The best you. version of yourself. And this is something that I want to bring to you, right, you know, to finish up for today with this. Is that the secret of the the secret of the hustle? Why do you think it brings out the best of everyone? Because you find yourself, mm-hmm. you find the truest version of your potential, your yep. inner self, your inner. A lot of Jay Z, a lot of people come out and say, you know, we all have inner greatness. We all have something inside of yep. us to offer to this world, and yep. I truly believe that. Yep. I truly believe that our purpose on this earth isn't just to live and make money and repeat our day. It's in order to create better experiences yep. in this world. I think we all have a gift like what we're doing. Yep. Our sole purpose is to help as many people as and, possible. And that's our gift. And and, yeah. and that's our gift to the world. I think I'd rather put my, look, Jesus Christ did it. He put all his energy into people. Um, mm. If you look at what Anthony Robbins has done, Grant Cardone even in, in, in certain elements, mm. uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, Anthony Fasella, who who has been stabbed however many times mm. and he's, he's scar tissue, like to get up every day and, and I was about to say F and commit, but F and commit to the world. Mm. These guys, that's you, why you need to be these the best guys, of you. And these guys, from what Andrew just said, not only sports for that, like not only sports fanatic that he is, and all the sports people that he admires, but the coaching people that we admire. Right, going back to the we have the beginning. limits that we, well, we there's people that we look up to too. Exactly, and look with this, you know, I, I've always said that that those who strive for excellence and outstanding result. Um, and as any results, value themselves on who they are and enjoy meeting a high standard within themselves. When you spend time pushing, you know, uh, pursuing your dreams, uh, excellence and outstanding achievements will be the result. It keeps your awareness and attention on things that are positive and brings possibilities on how it could be even better. Always ask yourself, can I do better than this? If you answer yes, you see yourself in a much more higher value. Then you raise your standard to where you want to be. Well, it is about valuing yourself. If you yeah. yourself, because of the fact is that no one else is ever going to see value into you until you present the value of within yourself. Yeah. I've gone through yes. hell, but this is who I am today, and this is what what I the past has brought me in today, right? And they always said that you know the thoughts that you were thinking yesterday has brought you to, to today, mm. and where your thoughts will uh, you thinking now will bring you to where you're you going are to be tomorrow. tomorrow. And yeah. that, uh, look, Terry, you're right about that, and I think that's very important for people to understand. Yeah. Is 
when you're striving for something, you mm. are becoming the best version exactly of yourself, regardless right. of what anyone says. It exactly. becomes the heart. It goes to the heart of everything. Yeah. Um, especially when you set an, set an outcome. The, the mm. thing that people make most mistakes about is they start talking too much about what they're doing. They start to, uh, kind of gossiping about mm-hmm. everything that they're doing, da, 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 and they get a lot sidetracked. But at the end of the day, you need to come and refocus yourself back to who you are. But this is the thing. Do you doesn't mean sh- crap anymore, pardon me. Mm. Finding yourself along that journey, I think, is the most beautiful thing. I think when you go through an experience, you're like, wow, I just wrote all these notes or mm. I did this. And you're just like, I'm capable of that. Mm-hmm. I think it was it was yesterday. Jasmine's like, you're, one of the, you're probably the cleverest person I've ever met. Mm. And it's the first time I've heard that in 20 years, regardless it's my fiance or not. Mm. But it's like... It was said in a different tone. It wasn't said as just my fiance. It was mm. said in, in a sincere, yeah. natural way. And I was yeah. like, I, I made a decision when my grandfather passed away to not mm. waste my potential. Mm. And I think mm. people need to do that mm. and say, you know what? I'm going to try to reach my potential in something. Mm. But for others, maybe that potential is a lot higher. So mm. in saying that, I think mm. that higher standard what we're saying that level of excellence mm. leaving your mark on the world a legacy mm. behind whatever it is i think you need to and you do it right you got to do it right there's yeah. steps to it there's there's success leaves clues and i think it that's does. very important for it people does. To understand. it does look good and look to finish up on this right and look to leave on that and thanks so much for sharing it, it the fact is that the level of excellence that people have to see in themselves you have to put the work in to get to that level of excellence of and sometimes like i said the question what is it between being rich and being rich People that have no money at all, or some people have, you know, do have money, but not as much as you think. But they still are rich within themselves. Are rich of life. The, yeah, that's the, and some people have a different level of excellence. If you think about it, everybody, everybody every, has their own perspective. Of the world. Exactly. There's eight billion different, or I have it, seven point seven billion people yeah. in the world, or whatever it is. There's seven point seven billion. Yeah realities exactly and different worlds exactly those universes and we need to be able to appreciate that and accept that and understand someone's map of the world yeah you know and that's why i think you're absolutely right with that Mm. last step and i appreciate you came up with that because Mm. living to a higher standard is very important i think it's important but of course i mean that's my belief yeah that it's important to live to a higher standard now for another person may not be maybe their perspective of a higher standard is talking a certain way or being Mm. a certain way I think mine is, comes down to work ethic. I think yeah. when you when when you put certain amount of hours, whatever it is, I want to try to be the best at making frames. I want to be the best at trying to make in a glass. Whatever it may be, I want to be the best mother exactly. in the world. Best father, best, best mother, mother, best whatever, friend, best, best colleague. The best, best of the best. Is. Not for egotistic purposes. Not for anyone else. Not for just anyone for else. yourself. Truly for yourself. Exactly. And once you find that, and you'll know by the people that you surround yourself with, of course, of course. you know, We've talked about this, yep. you know, the society and the drinking every week and stuff like that. Like, whatever, man. They ain't mm. going to get you anywhere. No. It doesn't matter how hard you work, how many loans you take out, how many credit cards you use to buy that watch. Mm. Dude, you're broke. What was that say? Oh, man, that's saying people mm. do mm. more to avoid oh, uh, pain. Oh, that question how I said about John, uh, um, John Canary, that guy, how he goes, you know, do you hate, do you hate more than you love? Well, that, that yeah. too, it, 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 you said you said it afterwards when I said what I said was people will always do something to avoid pain. Pain, you know, yeah. To gain people pleasure. Do, yeah, yeah, people, Anthony Rose said we do more to avoid pain than to feel pleasure. But what I was saying, um, Christopher Howard said this was, or, or Warren Buffett said this, yeah. uh, people will put themselves into poverty, try like pretending to be broke yeah. not to be broke yeah, yeah yeah so they'll drive themselves into poverty by not pretending to be broke because they want to live to expectations of rea- uh, of, of society so- and society expectations exactly and this is why and this is why I want to leave with you guys this is that you know you're perfect the way you are but if you feel that you you're know, not broken you're not broken Never one, no one's ever broken you but if you feel that fixed. where you where you are right now you want to be somewhere different you want to strive for something then guess what if you know you're excellent right now, guess what? Excellence will be uh, a virtue and especially excellence will come your way. Yeah. And that's what I believe. And look, guys, 
that's the end for today's video. So thank you so much for so watching. And like I said, um, again, uh, hit us up, you know, leave a comment on the bottom of YouTube, you know, subscribe to us, you know, and also- Make sure to hit the like if you're on, YouTube, yep. on Facebook, make yep. sure to share, that's make it. sure to comment, make sure to pay, uh, put the word out there. That's it, um, yeah. And welcome to CHP. And that's it, guys. So look, thank you so much. Until next time. Cheers.